Hello and welcome back to the channel. In the previous lecture, we have seen all about the predicate functions and how we can include them in your analytic cipher queries. So this lecture is all about the scalar functions. These are pretty handy as well and they return a single value and each of them would have a significant impact on your query result. So without further ado, let's get into it. So like this lecture will be very short. So we are just going to get dive into these functions and have some simple hands on because these are very simple to understand and there is not much complexities to understand these functions. So like the first two are like introduced in the newer version of Neo 4J. One is the char link and the second one is character link. So this is like the similar and the char link is nothing but the alias of the character link. So it returns the number of Unicode characters. So let's say if you have a string, then it will give you the size of the string. Basically, it's so simple. You can just maybe return the character length inside that you can pass a string and get the size. So if you want to have a workflow where you want a required length of a field. So if you want to check if the string field has number of characters equal to some value, let's say if you are dealing with a credit cards data, credit card have a certain number of digits. So if you want to check if the number you have in your data set is correct, then you can identify it using the character length. And the next one is the colis. Colis is really helpful to handle the null values in the graph. So during the ingestion, let's say if you have like null values present in the graph, then you can replace it with some value so that it will not get affected in the merge statement. Because you have to understand one thing clearly that merge statement does not work with any null value in a property. So if you are doing a merge statement inside that you have to provide a property and for that property, the value should be present. If it is null, it will throw an error. So to handle that, we can easily use colis operation. So let's talk about it with a simple example. So as you can see, I have already kicked it off my Neo 4J desktop. So just you can open the desktop and here we have like different nodes. Let's take an actor here quickly. So in this case, we have different properties here. We have the bio, born, born ID, died, but we don't have the age of the actor present. We only have the born date or we can say it as a date of birth, but you want to take one actor here. So I'll just take one actor with N with limit one. So I'll just take one actor here. So let's say this actor doesn't have the age property present on its node. So, but the merge statement will require you to have some value. So let's say if you want to create a node which is connected to actor named age. So let's do that now. So here we will just use a simple merge and we want to create a new node which is age, which is labeled as age. And inside that we are going to pass the age of that actor. So let's say here I'll give the age as the end dot age and let's return everything here. So as you can see, it got an error that cannot merge the following node because of the null property. We cannot give null property here. So to handle that, we can maybe get it into a colis and inside colis, if a certain value is null, then we can replace it with some other value. So let's say if you want to bypass this error, we will give it as a zero age. So if there is no age property present on actor, then it will directly give it as a zero. So I'll just return this now. And as you can see, we got the nodes created. So as you can see, since the age was not present using colis, we replaced it using the zero value. You can do that for handling the null values coming from any data sources. So if you are ingesting the data from Spark or Hadoop, then you can easily do that during the ingestion into Neo 4J. Okay, so the next one is the element ID. So it will return a node identifier, which is like unique with a specific transaction and the DBMS. So this element ID is like a unique identifier within a certain transaction. So let's talk about it with a simple example. Okay, so let's take an example of this actor only. So I'll just take one actor and if you want to return the element ID of this actor, we can directly give like return the element ID and inside that we can pass our node which is N. So as you can see, this will be the unique identifier for this node. We also have an ID function that we are going to see very shortly. Okay, so the next one is the end node. So basically 
if you have a relationship you will be having the start node and the end node for that relationship and the direction of the relationship will be from the start node to the end node so let's say if actor acted in the movie then the movie node will be the end node for that relationship let's talk about it with a simple example so let's say if we have a actor which is like we'll give r as a variable which is acted in and we have the movie node represented as m and here we have like the end node as movie so if we just return everything here as you can see we got the movie as well as the movie as well as the actor which acted in the movie but to get the end node of the relationship so this relationship has the end node as has the start node which is like the actor and the movie as the end node so let's say if you want to get the end node then we can get that end node of r and there you go we got that particular movie which is the end node of that relationship this is very simple the next one is the head so this head will return the first element in a list so let's say if you have a list of elements then it will only give you the first element of the list and the, it is similar to the last because it the last will give you the last element present in the list let's talk about it with a simple example so for this example let's take a list here so we'll take a list with have like simple elements you can directly use a property but for your better understanding let's take a list here so we'll have like apple then the orange and we have the banana so we have a list we'll call it as list so here if you want to get the head which is nothing but the first element of this list so we will get directly return the head of the list so as you can see we got the apple and similarly the last will give us the last element so if you have like the list of nodes then it is very handy to get the first to get the hold of the first element and the last element you can maybe order by to get the first element which you need and it is very useful for data manipulation or the data cleaning task or maybe the data fixing because if anything is messed up in your graph then to solve that issue these functions are pretty pretty useful if you have like duplicate relationships duplicate nodes created then this head and last function will help you to list your duplicate records and then remove the unnecessary ones this is very handy in day to day tasks so then we have the id so i already told you that this function is deprecated but it's very useful so this id is already present on the each node and relationship on neo4j so let's talk about it how to get hold of this id so as you can see if you just return any node so this node every node will have the unique identifier which is represented as the id it is like pretty useful to maintain the uniqueness because if you want to apply some transformation or the analysis on top of few nodes then instead of going on matching on the properties or matching on the properties or matching on the map of the properties matching on id is pretty useful task so let's say we have a single node here so we'll be having a single node which is actor so i'll just return this node and here we know the id of it is 9816 but you can directly get the id through the id function so the id of n would be 9816 this is very simple the next function is the length so this length will returns the length of a path so let's take a simple example of what it really means so consider we have a path here so we have a path which is like represented inside the p so here if you want to return the length of the path we can directly do that using the return clause here using return then the length and inside that you can just give the p here so as you can see it will just give us the length of the path so as you can see the length of the path would be 1 so we'll just so we'll just maybe return this result here to 1 and there you go the length of the path is 1 because it only has the single set of record then the next one is the properties so it will return the map containing all the properties of a map and similarly it will also give us the property of a node as well as the relationship let's talk about it with the example of maybe node so here as you can see in this simple query we will just get like the properties and we'll get the properties of the m which is movie here 
so as you can see we are getting we are getting the property as the year imdb rating the runtime the imdb id the movie id countries as well as so on so like this will give you the whole properties of the relationship as well as node as well as the whole path the next function is the size so size is nothing but returns the items number of items present in a list so if a list contains like multiple items to get the hold of the size you can use the size option here as you can see we already have a list so here if you want to return like the size of this list so the size of the list would be the three because it has the three limits it if you know python it is really piece of cake for you or any programming language because these functions are pretty similar to what we observe in other programming languages then we have the start node so like returns the start node of a relationship we already talked about it and so then we have the data type manipulation functions so one is like two boolean then we have the two float and the two integer if you want to convert any string value into the integer then we can easily do that also if you want to convert it into float we can do that as well as well as we can convert the string value to a boolean value using the two boolean function let's talk about them with a simple example so let's say let's create a one node here so i'll just use merge node we'll just create a test node here which has the test label and the property will be like the age maybe and inside age let's say if you have the value present as like this string so if you just return this node so as you can see we got the age as 19 here so but if you hover on top of it it is present as a string let's say if you want to convert it into integer value so let's say if you want to convert it into integer we'll just take the match here now and after that we'll just set the age one will create next another property it equal to two integer to convert this value into integer and let's take the value of the test dot h so it will create new value and the value and the data type would be integer here so i'll just return this so there you go we got another property so age one has the integer value we can similarly do that using float so let's convert the value into float and here let's create another property here let's create age 2 so as you can see another property is created and the data type is float so similarly you can you convert it into boolean as well so let's create age 3 here and we'll give like 2 boolean and there you go it is created a 2 boolean property so as you can see the 2 boolean is not possible for such values so therefore it doesn't even created the value because it was null so if you are setting some property to a null value it will not even get created because it doesn't have anything to hold inside as a property so that's why it returned like the null but let's say if you have some property like a property is named property 1 and you want to convert a string which is present as a true value so let's say if you have a string value present as the true right so this is nothing but stored in string it doesn't have any meaning but if you want to convert into the boolean then that is possible so if you just run this it will create a next property and there you go you got a boolean data type property created inside true because two boolean will only expect you to have a string which has either true or false it will not take anything if you pass a number that we have seen earlier it will return it as a null and not even create a property so this is how you can manipulate and change the data type of some properties in your on on few properties in your graph and then we have like the type so type will return a string representation of a relationship type so if you want to retrieve a data or maybe use a relationship type to create another relation or maybe store or maybe ex extract that values for further analysis it's possible so to do that you can just directly get hold of the relationship type so here we have like the this example so in this example we have like the acted in relationship so to get the value of the relationship type we'll just directly get the type of r and there you go it has the acted in relation 
it is returning more results because it has four records present because this movie has four actors so that's why it returned four records here but let's say if you just give distinct here it will only give us one record because it's like a duplicate records so there you go acted in is a relationship type for this relation this is how you can get hold of a relationship type and then at last we have the value type function which is also introduced in the newer version of neo 4j so basically it will give us a representation of most precise value type that a given expression evaluates to which means that if you have like a number which is present as an integer so it will give us as the integer not null which means that this value is integer and is it is not null similarly it will give you the same for boolean as well the timestamp as well and so on this is very interesting and this will be the exercise for you to come up with a solution to use value type if effectively in your analytics queries so i hope you understood what are the scalar functions and how to include them in your queries and like how to use them effectively in your analytics task so that's it for today i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching